give us understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this broadcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to close your eyes and tell the Lord, God, have your way in my life today. That this service will not be ordinary. It shall bring fresh impartation to my life. Can you just pray the prayer, Jesus? Lord, speak to me. Lord, bless me. Tell the Lord, this week, let it bring forth into new things in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, I pray that you will have your way. You will bless us through your word. You will strengthen our hearts. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, I read from the book of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 9. Can you help me there? Yeah. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing, be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who are delivered us from the power of darkness. And are translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Say amen. amen. So I'm speaking this morning on strategic prayers for effective results. Strategic prayers for effective results. Let me start by saying that everything, every grace we receive through the word of God is driven to manifestation through effective prayers. You can have the promises of God and it can remain a promise and it will never be actualized if you cannot drive it through prayers. Many people hear prophecies. They hear what the prophets have said. They have dreams or what the promises God has given to them. But they are never battered. That is, they did not come to manifestation. And the reason is that because their prayer base is very weak. And some also who could say that yes, we are praying. Their prayer is not strategic. Their prayer is not definite. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture we just read, if you go back from where it started, Paul the Apostle was writing to the church, the church of God in Colossae, and was telling them that since we heard of their faith in Christ Jesus, that for this God, we also since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. In fact, the greatest prayer that a man can pray for himself is a prayer to know God. To have the knowledge of the will of God. Because if you miss it at the point of knowing the will of God, then every prayer becomes a waste. And many people pray today without having the understanding of what the will.
need of God is. The way we pray in Africa, the way we pray in Nigeria. Now, you see, if it is only the uh, words that will bring forth results, we you have more results in a nation like Nigeria than in any part of the world. Am I right? If it is only the fact that somebody goes to the mountain or go to the prayer house and um, or you do vigil, you do fasting, if that is what will bring result, then every person who is a Christian in Nigeria should have received a portion of answers to prayers. Now you can see that prayer is more than that. A man that does not have the knowledge of God, who does not have know the will of God and the person says he's praying it is like somebody that is playing football over the bar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a goal post you are to hit you know there are some I'm not um, I'm, I'm an enthusiast when it comes to football all that time you see I like I told you that I always play wash the football that I don't play it. but the one that will give me God pray you mm, I don't want I don't watch it after they have played that football, I can watch it. I didn't tell you I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm still enjoy it. Shout hallelujah. But you see, at times, uh, you will see a stupid goal kick. And you begin to ask yourself, is this man blind? This is an empty net. He has beat the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper is already outside. And the man is facing an empty net. He will just kick it. Just go over the bar. I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, the technical or the coach, he will mark him down. Hallelujah. That uh, this one, if it is other one, the one in Ayeshi, this one, there is a power that is following him, and the power of never, never to do well. Because if he not, did not even hit the ball, if he just rolled the ball, it will still go. So, there are opportunities to give back to miracles in our lives through effective prayers. And yet, we miss the opportunities. Why? Because we do not understand what the will and the mind of God is. And so Paul was saying, Colossian Christians, the first prayer that I started praying after the revival, after the administration that got you born again, I kept on praying for you, you know, go back to the scriptures, I kept on praying for you that I that we pray that we have it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom, wisdom and what? If you take that as a prayer point, you can pray for yourself on that point every day. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A day, scarcely with a day go, that I will not pray for myself using Isaiah chapter 11. Asking for the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. In fact, that's my greatest prayer. I'm still going to have a time maybe during the convention. I'm still looking at time to teach us the tabernacle prayers. Praise God. That when you pray the tabernacle, that is the tabernacle prayers, using the tabernacle, you know, of Moses, that God, the vision of the tabernacle God gave to Moses, that was also replicated when the temple of Solomon was built. If you use it, you have the understanding and you pray based on every. Uh, point, or let me say every strategic place in the tabernacle because there is an outer court and in the outer court of the tabernacle there is a place called the place of the prison altar that's where every sacrifice is made and if you move from that place there is a place called the lava that is where the high priest or the priest go and of course sought himself out to be qualified. Hallelujah. And to be sure that there is no error in his life. So when I pray every day, I start, you know, from the place of the cross. Now it's not the place of the cross because the only sacrifice that is to be made for the sins and for the redemption of mankind is the, 
is the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Is that not so? Now, it's a place of the blood. That is the place of the brazen altar. Now, you move to that place, the next place, rather, is a place to check yourself, you know, in line with the word of God if you are in His will. Hallelujah. And when you move there into the inner court, now, when you get to the inner court, the first place you see is the place of the seven golden candlesticks. The seven golden candlesticks represent the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. The seven spirits of God that I'm talking about, the spirit of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of grace. Then the second thing there is talking about the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, and the last one, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I pray that prayer for myself every day. And I pray that prayer for the church, for some of you also, either individual or collectively. Hallelujah. Because when you have the seven spirit of God, which represent the seven golden candlesticks that you see also in Revelation chapter 1, all right? The same seven golden candlesticks which represent the spirit of the Lord. When you have this anointing upon your life every day, your life will never remain the same. I can pray that prayer one hour, I am on that. Just that one point. It's a prayer made easy. Prayer is not, if you don't have a strategy of prayer, you can miss so many points. So if I want to pray for two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, the prayer points are there. Hallelujah. I pray for myself, apply it to the church, pray for people, pray for family, pray for the people. Hallelujah. Now, if you move from that place of the golden, uh, I mean, uh, yes, the golden candlesticks, there is a place called the place or the table of the showbread. The table of the showbread is a place where the bread is used to be available, praise God, but now the bread is the word of God. Is that all right? Now, where you have access to cross check, to hold on to the promises of God. Hallelujah. Because when you have the anointing of the Spirit of God upon your life and you lay hold on the promises of God, the next place in the tabernacle to go to is the place of the incense. And what is the place of the incense? The place of the incense is the place of prayers. The Bible said that the incense that was born in the Old Testament is the prayer of the saints. That is the place of intercession. Now you now want to pray for people, intercede for people, intercede for nation, intercede with what is going around you. That's the place of incense. So that's the tabernacle prayer. Like I said, I will say five times to teach us. Because when you grasp it, those of you that are struggling to pray for 30 minutes and you don't know and you are confused or you pray for one hour and you don't. When you pray through the tabernacle, one hour, two hours, you are there. Shout hallelujah. And from the place of the incense, where do you move to? You now move from the place of the incense into the Holy of Holies. And in the Holy of Holies, that is the place of what? The Ark of Covenant. And when you look at the Ark of Covenant, what are the contents? And of course, the half of covenant, that's where the mercy seat is. Hallelujah. Of course, the place now where you are there to seek the face of God in some strategic areas. Because inside the act of covenant itself, there are three things in the heart. The first thing is the rod of Aaron the body. And that is talking about the authority. Power. Hallelujah. What do you use the rod to do to exercise authority? That's why in our convention we are talking about the scepter. Hallelujah. Those are some of the things we are going to touch. Because it is the rod of authority. You know what the rod? What about the rod of Aaron? You know it was the rod of Moses. Praise God. Now, it started with Moses. <clears throat> and Moses' rod swallowed all the rods of the magicians. You, you remember that? Moses' rod, you know, caused them a lot of miracles. It was this same Moses' rod that was used to strike the rod and the rod bring, bring forth water. So it's the rod of authority. So it's a place where you get to the place of the ark where you exercise the authority of the word of God as a child of God in the place of prayer. One of the contents of the ark of the covenant also 
also is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, the broken Ten Commandments, that is still to remind you of checking yourself through the Word of God. Pray the Word of God into manifestation. As you check your life, as you check, you know, that is the place of mercy. Asking for people who are, who are, we are not, we are not living by the law. But the law is now a mirror. Somebody hear what I'm saying? The law is what? It's a mirror. And of course, the mirror means that when you check through it, thou shalt not kill. Do I kill? If you backbite, you will say slander, you may kill her. You thou shalt not uh, steal. Do I steal? Do I steal from God? Do I steal tithe? Do I steal offering? Okay. What is that thing that I like I steal it? Do I steal it in my place of work? Whatever you call it. Now you check yourself, you look at it, thou shalt all the thou shalt, you know it. Honor your father and your mother. Do I honor my father? Do I honor my mother? You will cross check yourself and you will be able to use that also to pray. That's why the Ten Commandments are so there. Don't agree with the Christian and say, We are not at the time of the law. That's right. But the law is still a mirror. Shout and do you. What do you do with the mirror? You check yourself. You look at yourself. You say amen. amen. And the third thing in the content of that act is what? The man. And that is where you bring about prosperity. Hallelujah. It was a miraculous provision. It has never happened for man to be fed with the food of the angels. We wouldn't have known that angels used to eat. Praise God. <clears throat> and that's how we get to everyone who see it. Hello. Hello, sir. So do all your fasting here. So when you get to the back here, you will eat. Praise the Lord. Miraculous provision in the wilderness for 40 years for people to be journeying. There is no time to farm. There is no, they cannot farm. They will not do any business. Hallelujah. But God fed them. At the time they thought that they wanted to eat meat. Can God give us meat? God fed them. So the manner represents the power of God to bring provisions. So prosperity is part of the gospel. Somebody hear you? That God can miraculously, strategically bless you. And when you move from me, and now look at it, now don't forget that the, the box is said called the Ark of Covenant is plated with gold. And it is called the mercy seat. There are two angels that their wings, you know, touch each other. Is that also? Now, we call it the mercy seat. That is where you now seek for God's mercy over for your life, for people's life, and so on and so forth. Somebody get me this morning. What I am saying is that if you don't understand, have the knowledge of God, pray for God's life, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, spiritual understanding. You can see it repeating itself from that Isaiah 11 that I just put in. Hallelujah. You are too quiet. I don't know. Are you following me? Maybe you didn't see me for the last few days and you think that uh, <laughs> I've not, uh, I've not come to demonstrate to preach again. When pastor go for quiet place, is to go and fire. Shout hallelujah. And I said, go and rest, go and rest, go and I have gone to rest. That rest is in the presence of God. Rest. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ram says, he will renew your strength. So don't worry, I am back with fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things will happen in your life. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord. No, that's not what I'm asking for. Go back to my pollution. I've quoted that place. So, if you look at that pollution, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 9, I can read my Bible here. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. You can't do it. Must understand in this. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. The message was so well preached last Sunday. I watched it. I'm online. Praise God. All the other call, I watch everything. So I saw it. You know, we are finished. Interestingly, I said I want to go and rest. When I go to my father in the Lord there, when I arrived on Saturday, he said, You are preaching tomorrow. I said, No, sir, I'll come here to rest. He said, No, say you are preaching. He said, It's a complete. And you don't argue with your leader. Hallelujah. He said, You are preaching. So the message I did not plan for, I have to preach. Praise God. Preach it, preach it to hundreds of people. Hallelujah. But what I'm trying to say is that when you understand all these things after you have given your life to Jesus, so I watched when I finished something before the service, I was I watched, I was I watched, I watched part of it, and you see, beautiful time dedicating your life to God, consecrating your life to God. But one thing that you must not miss out in the place of faith, there are people that answer. Because they are not sure whether they are born again or not. Is that what you to me? You must understand your place in Christ Jesus. Our Jesus is not a weak savior. The Bible says he's able to save us unto the uttermost. And when you hear the word and you give your life to Christ and you dedicate, you must walk your talk the way it is said. When you come to talk, 